Papyrus! Somebody call a doctor! I want a bigger logo! You can't handle a bigger logo! G'day, this is the Dr. Branding Podcast. I am the Branding Dr. Frank. The surgery is open and let's see our next uh, patient, yeah, for our next patient question. Okay, today comes from Matthew uh, from France. I hope I didn't watch that name, um, the French version of Matthew, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, Matthew asks, my branding is difficult to remember and implement. We have so much going on and while we do have brand guidelines, uh, it's a Bible to remember and sift through. What do we do? Thanks, Matthew, all the way from France for that one. Ah, uh, okay. I think I've learned so far in my branding journey, take a sip, <laughs> mentioning the word journey, uh, is that many, many branding people or many companies potentially uh, complicate their branding. Same with marketing as well, and same with probably any other part of, of business is this lack of clarity that we have in terms of uh, delivering a, a very consistent experience and outcome um, and, and process as well uh, from an internal perspective. Um, so branding in this respect sounds like it's more complex than it needs to be. And for some, the deliverable uh, can be. Um, so it can be just too much to absorb and remember and have to deliver on um, where it, it you know, I think at the end of the day, it just gets lost in in translation of how do we use this? How do we use that? How do we make sure that we're ticking all the boxes of our brand and it just becomes an absolute cluster of confusion? Uh, but I think the, the thing that we kind of need to remember is that not everything needs to be remembered. <laughs> That's a weird, weird phrase I've never said before, but everything doesn't need to be remembered about your brand. We can just lean into a few things that really work for us uh, to be remembered uh, by for our cons for our customers as well as our team internally um, because we don't want to have, have internal confusion because it can lead to external confusion um, where your brand becomes forgettable um, as a result by customers. So we don't want that. And that, this sounds like it might be bit of a cause and effect of what might be happening with Matthew here. Uh, so in terms of a diagnosis, um, for me, this is an interesting one where there's too much going on. It's not being used, utilized effectively, and the outcome means potential confusion. So if that's what that's happening here, I don't have the full context, obviously, but uh, if that's what's happening here, and you might be experiencing this, we have got so much going on, you're like, far out, what do we, what do, we do here? Uh, the the diagnosis for this is it's a case of brand nausea. Uh, it, it's your your brand basically is too hard to remember and, and utilize as a result. You know, for an internal practice, generally with branding, we want to keep it very simple. But if you have a case of uh, too many values, like I'm talking six, seven, eight, ten, I've seen brand values that teams need to kind of live and die by. How do you how do you expect everybody to remember them and then live up to them day to day, um, especially ones that are very vague that don't have much context behind it. Just a one word you kind of got to interpret without any kind of distinction behind what that word means in context to the business. Um, certain attributes that we need to live up to a brand essence of what the essence of the brand is and these overlapping circles and rhomboids and things that I hear a lot from uh, a marketing professor by the name of Mark Ritson talks about this of just overcomplicating the shit out of marketing and branding. But we want to we want to create just some simplicity and, and this can come into your external parts as well. But for the internal, we've got too many things to remember. It could be as well, your brand messaging. Um, and, and as a result, we can't really align with it as a team. You know, even if you're an individual of one, it can be difficult to, to remember all this stuff and lean into it, especially if the personality of your brand is reflective of your own, but it, for a team setting, uh, it, it's too much. Um, what do we do? How do we show up? What do we, like it creates confusion and uh, a bit of uncertainty. And, uh, and I think a team wants to live up to the expectations of how do we come to the table each time and create something that is that feels on brand. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to take a bit of a sip here. Now, that's the internal side. Uh, the external 
part that I've kind of alluded to here is if your brand isn't coming to mind because you've got too much going on, you haven't given a, a customer a very clear understanding of what your brand is, what it does, why it's for them or who it's for and, and why should they care to some degree uh, and think of you as a result. Um, if that's not happening, if brands, uh, if, if customers aren't keeping your brand top of mind, then you kind of know, you get a bit of a sense there that your branding and marketing isn't working. So if you do a bit of research and a market research and customers are saying that they recall other brands more, so they get a better brand awareness and consideration score than your own, then you know that there's a potential problem with your branding and marketing. Not standing out enough, uh, not being present enough, not coming to mind easily because there's too much complexity potentially to your brand. You know what? You might have a very complex logo and complex packaging design, things like that that just becomes too hard to kind of remember. We want to keep things quite simple and easy to read, easy to uh, visually uh, consume um, and, and catch our attention. Uh, and if there's too much detail, we can really get lost in, in all those bits of detail. Um, and I think this is where we see, even when it comes to messaging, we see mixed messages uh, from from for clients or customers, consumers, your audience, to understand what they should be paying attention to and why they should be leaning in to find out more. If you have a lot of different mixed messages and it's not so clear or it's it's too detailed potentially to get a point the point across. People don't have time because we have so many messages coming at us and there's so much going on. So if you have, you know, a different value proposition that says one thing and then a selling proposition says another, and then you have your story that talks about something completely different and it's a bit of a hodgepodge of different things and slogans that that talk about a, a completely different feel of offer that you have, it, it I can't really give you examples here because most brands that we do see every day do it quite well and they're very single-minded in this. Um, but if we're, if this is what's happening, especially at a smaller brand trying to grow and really get a foothold in your in your market, we need to yeah, simplify things, pull back uh, and, and cut the fat basically and have a bit of liposuction in terms of your brand uh, bits and pieces and, and create this clarity. Um, we need to see a brand show up, your brand especially, show up repetitively uh, with the same kind of message, same kind of look over and over and over to be able to remember it, for it to come to mind, to be considered, bought, and then thought of again to buy and buy and buy and buy again and again and again and again. So my prescription as a result to, uh, to remedy brand amnesia Let's start with the internal part of things. And this is a process that I go through in terms of trying to refine an identity for a business is just to create one unifying concept. It can be very, very, very simple. A classic example of this that I got again from that marketing professor I mentioned before, Mark Ritz, and he told a story. Um, well, not so much told a story, showed a video and a speech he gave of a uh, CEO of a Swiss watchmaker called Ublo. I've given this example many times in my content, but the CEO of Hublot, Jean-Claude Bivet, he came to the company um, after it being been long-standingly owned by its original owner and needed to give, felt that it needed to have a very single-minded concept that could radiate out into all aspects of the brand, both how we market it, how we brand it, how we create our products, and uh, one central religion, concept, ethos, North Star, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that Hublot could live and breathe with. And the concept was one word, which doesn't need to be one word. It can be a phrase, it can be a sentence, whatever it might be. But just a single-minded idea that represents what the brand is, does, and who it's for, um, so that people can remember it, can people can think of it, it makes sense. Um, it might not need to be for at the forefront of your business so that a, a, a customer knows what that word is or that phrase is. But Hublot's was a term called fusion. And fusion is a word we know. It's in the English dictionary. Um, but fusion meant that bringing two things together 
is that are unlikely matches, bring them together for the first time, and that's what Hublot does. So a classic case for them, they had a watch that uh, brought together gold and rubber, a rubber strap, gold face watch, something that had never really been done by any uh, watchmaker up to that point, is what, how Jean-Claude Biver described as a provocation in this world back uh, in the 90s, I think it was, and or maybe even the 80s. And what happened was it's this fusion where rubber and gold had really never met before um, since the, or hadn't met since the Big Bang, where all the elements all together and then they diverged and then they're coming back together with Hublot, with this fusion. And as a result, they call the watch the Big Bang. So we see how fusion comes together. Uh, this is this is the whole ethos behind Hublot's product line, how they do you know ceramic with silver, things like that 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 just change up how their brand can come to life. That was put into their advertising, uh, was put into their marketing uh, approach, all the things. So this one unifying concept. The other thing you can do internally in terms of making sure that your team align uh, with with your brand to make it easy for everybody is to just remember three key things. Um, it could be your purpose. So why do we get out of bed every day to do this for these people? You know, we're here to do better branding. That's my purpose here, to help brands do better branding, help businesses do better branding, help designers do better branding. It's a very simple idea. Uh, values. Try and keep it to three it is a good bet. Uh, and three things that people can, at any stage level, uh, job description can uh, really uh, lean into and hit as part of a brand culture. It can form part of your brand culture. Uh, any more than three tend to be forgettable. I worked in a business that had four and I could never remember the fourth one to save myself. One of them was creativity and I could really lean into that as the only designer in the building. Um, but yeah, three seems to be a good uh, number. You could do two, um, but it just gives you a bit of a, a little bit of a triangled <laughs> trioid of values. And then your personality. What kind of personality do we want to show up with every day? That could be based on your values, um, the kind of energy that you want to bring. If it's if it's uh, professional and and serious, that sort of tone of voice that we want to have as a result, or it's much more playful and, and engaging. Um, there's there's a whole you know spectrum of personality that we could do. You could lean into the uh, 12 Jungian personality types if you wanted to in terms of archetypes of how your brand shows up is a bit of an example to base a personality on or grow from at least. And that could even come from the team that you have as a collective. How does your team come together and mush together um, being unified by, by that one concept and some of these values uh, as a personality? Or it might be uh, distinctive of the the founder of the business. You might be the founder of the business, um, just like a Richard Branson or a Gary V. What is the pinnacle personality that we all want to kind of live up to in terms of what this brand is going to be remembered for as a result? Because that's going to obviously impact what the uh, the consumer sees, the external. So in terms of the external, we want to remember up to three key messages. It might just be one the message that you just announce over and over and over. And like Nike's is just do it. It's their tagline. It was a slogan. It be, like for a marketing campaign, it became a tagline that understand that you understand what the brand lives and breathes to just go out and do it. Uh, then three key visual aspects that people can um, identify easily and remember uh, that communicates potentially what it is you do, but doesn't necessarily need to. It just needs to be identifiable. Um, so that could be things like color, could be your logo, could be your packaging style or the, the shape of your product um, that does stand out distinctly or even in your service, it's your face, it's your people's faces or one face in particular that might be the face of your business, could be a mascot, things like that that you can do and, and lean into just a few of them that you just make sure that they're always present. They're called distinctive brand assets. It also includes your messaging. Um, it could be sounds as well not just visual stuff as well, um, just like Netflix do with their to dun before you watch a show or when you turn on a Mac computer, chong, you know it's a Mac straight away. Uh, and then we want to uh, effectively simplify 
what we have because Matthew said that he's got a brand guide, but you know, to sift through it, it's like a Bible. How you want to remedy that uh, with the solution is to create what I uh, have done in the past. I simplify my brand guidelines to be only a few pages now, up to maybe eight to ten, rather than forty page books or more. Um, is is a cheat sheet, and a cheat sheet can be just like an A4 or a US letter shaped document. It'd be one or two pages, front and back. The front side you could have all your strategy and messaging. The other side, you could have all your visuals, so your typography, your fonts, your colors, and your logos. Um, and it's just a very easy reference guide for everybody to have maybe in their drawer to easily reference uh, day in, day out. Or you put that into a bit of like a mini team handbook that everyone has on their desk or in the drawer, something like that that can be easily lived up to so that we make sure that we're consistent throughout our day and living up to the brand and what that expectation is of delivering a, delivering a great brand experience for our customers. Um, so this this at the end of the day, we want to try and improve mental availability as much as possible, both internally as well as externally, but most importantly externally for a customer to really think of your brand when needed uh, in terms of the offering that you deliver because there's so many different options out there, most likely in your category that a customer can choose from. We want to make sure that you are top of mind so that you are showing up consistently, which is one part of it, but also showing up with a consistent message and look and, and general brand um, that someone can remember and think of and lean into and maybe even connect with, uh, emotionally connect with so that there's this irrational feeling to that I want to choose this brand because it, I connect with it over another. So it's like most people with Apple, why someone chooses Apple over Microsoft, they do exactly the same things, they offer the same output, they're probably just as fast as each other, but I'm more emotionally attached to an Apple computer as a result of their branding, their marketing. It's simple, it looks creative, it, I connect with it, I align with it. So that's how I would go about uh, doing this, Mateo. Simplify down your brand into a few key things that you can remember. The one other little tip I could give you is that when you do create messaging is that if you um, have all different kinds of messaging, you have taglines, slogans, uh, your brand story, why choose us, uh, your selling proposition, you know, what do we offer, a value proposition, what benefit do you get as a result of working with us or buying from us, um, all those messages, if they have a very similar phrasing to them, so it feels quite repetitive, that's probably a good thing where you're not having to remember the same message over and over and over again. Um, and I've had clients in the past were like, you're just repeating yourself throughout all this messaging, just said in different ways. And like, that's, that's the kind of point because otherwise if I give you so much messaging, you're not going to use it because you're not going to remember what the wording is and it becomes more complicated and sounds like what Matthew's going through. So uh, Matthew, thank you for that question. I do hope that helps you. And I do hope that helps you if you are in a similar situation. Um, so thank you again for the question. Please take a piece of brand candy on your way out. That's my free resource guide to do better branding that you can get at g'dayfrank.com forward slash candy. You can also make an appointment via that link if you have a brand related ailment that you'd like some help with. And I'll see you at the next appointment in the next episode. Bye everyone. Thanks for listening. The surgery is now closed. The Dr. Branding Podcast is hosted by Reagan Frank McCrill, that's me, and for legal reasons I want to be clear that I am not a registered or qualified doctor. The premise for this podcast is that it is a satirical analogy for branding consultancy to help others with their brand success. This podcast is also sponsored by my branding business, G'day Frank. Say g'day today by booking a call with me at g'dayfrank.com.